Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today's topic of conversation is meiosis. Please make sure you're filling in your notes organizer as you watch the video and always pause if you need to, replay if you need to. Okay, we spent a lot of time in class talking about mitosis. Now we're gonna move on to a process called meiosis. And meiosis is the process of cell division that's necessary for sexual reproduction. In order for organisms to reproduce sexually, they have to utilize this process of meiosis. More, let's talk about why. Okay, we know that all human body cells, or somatic cells, have 46 chromosomes. We know that 23 of those chromosomes in all of our cells were given to us by our mother in, in the egg, and 23 of those chromosomes in every one of our cells came from our father in the sperm. Okay, so every cell in your body, except for one type of cell, which is what we're going to talk about today, has 46 chromosomes. So here you can see a karyotype, a map of someone's chromosomes. You can see they've got a total of 46 or 23 pairs one set given from mom, one set given from dad. Okay, we call each of these paired chromosomes homologous chromosomes. So these are paired chromosomes with the same genes. So in chromosome set number one here, you got one chromosome from mom and one chromosome from dad, but these all carry the same genes. So maybe in chromosome set number one, they carry the genes for hair color and eye color and whether or not you have dimples. Okay, you got one set of genes from mom, for that chromosome and one set of genes from dad for that set of chromosomes and we would call those homologous chromosomes so you have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes that's really important that you understand that when we're talking about how we produce um, egg and sperm you know sex cells Okay, so you're gonna hear me use the term gametes a lot today. Gametes are sex cells. So in humans, we're talking about in males, sperm, females, eggs. Human gametes contain 23 chromosomes. So remember, every somatic cell in your body has 46 chromosomes. There's, there's only one cell in your entire body that has a different number, and those are your sex cells. So females, eggs, males, sperm. Those cells, those sex cells, gametes, have 23 chromosomes. We call a cell that has two sets of chromosomes diploid, okay, di meaning two. They have a set from mom and a set from dad. So all of your somatic cells are diploid cells. A cell that only has one N or one set of chromosomes is called a haploid cell. These would be your gametes, sex cells. They have half the number of chromosomes. So think diploid, two sets, that's somatic cells, haploid, think half. They have half the number of chromosomes. Those are going to be your sex cells. So let's talk about why. Why in the world do our sex cells need to have an entirely different number? Why do they need to have half the number of chromosomes than every other cell in our body? Well, think about that. An organism has to produce gametes or sex cells in order to maintain the same number of chromosomes from generation to generation. So to ensure that our children are going to have 46 chromosomes in all of their somatic cells, when the mommy and daddy love each other, the 23 chromosomes need to come from the eggy and 23 chromosomes need to come from the spermy so that during fertilization they get restored to 46. Okay, so you have to have half in your sex cells and your gametes so that when they come together, they get restored to that full diploid amount. Okay, so in order for organisms to reproduce sexually, they have to have a process that produces sex cells, and that's what meiosis is. So meiosis is the process, the cell division process that produces gametes, that produces sex cells. So we and we just talked about this but when we produce sex cells okay males produce sperm females produce eggs those are both haploid cells they get joined together when the mommy and daddy love each other into the full 46 during fertilization so the number of chromosomes is restored to that diploid number during fertilization Okay, so meiosis, how does this happen? How do we produce cells that have half the number of chromosomes? So the purpose of meiosis is to reduce the chromosome number by half through the separation of homologous chromosomes. So, so we're starting with a diploid cell and we're turning it into haploid cells. And the only way that's going to happen is if you have two consecutive cell divisions. So remember, in mitosis, we started with one cell that divided, we ended up with two cells. But in order to end up with haploid cells, we have to start with one cell, divide that twice, which means we're going to end up with four daughter cells. So we have meiosis one, which is the first division, and the meiosis two, which is the second division. 
Okay, so big picture things I need you to understand. In order to produce haploid gametes, so gametes, sex cells, sex cells that are haploid have half the number of chromosomes. The only way we can do that is if we duplicate the DNA one time, but divide the cell two times. This is going to produce four daughter cells that are genetically different from the parent cell. Look at these daughter cells down here. Do they look exactly like that parent cell? No, they have half the number of chromosomes. Okay, so DNA duplicates once, but the cell divides twice, which means now we're producing cells that have half the number of chromosomes, so they're genetically different. Okay, so let's talk about that uh, duplicating the DNA once. So in, or prior to meiosis really, we have one interphase. So interphase in meiosis is very similar to the interphase before mitosis. The cell is growing, the cell is carrying out normal cell functions, and most importantly, the DNA duplicates. But this only happens one time. There is only one interphase. This never happens again. Okay, so after interphase, that's when we go on to meiosis 1, our first division of our nucleus here. So we're starting with one cell. By the end of meiosis 1, we're going to end up with two cells. So meiosis 1, same order as mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So in prophase 1, there are some key differences between uh, prophase 1 and prophase 2, and even some key differences between prophase 1 and 2 and prophase of mitosis. So pay close attention, write detailed notes. I cannot stress that enough. Okay, just like in prophase of mitosis, in prophase 1 of meiosis, we have the formation of chromosomes. But they do something very different in prophase 1 of meiosis. They pair up in their homologous chromosome pairs. So they sort of hold hands with one another. So you see how these chromosomes are sort of holding hands? When they're paired up like that, we call it a tetrad. Tetra, that word part, means four. So think about it. You've got basically one, two, or sorry, four chromatids. One, two, three, four chromatids that are paired together. So when the, when the two chromosomes are in this little holding hands position during prophase one, we call that a tetrad. Now something very interesting happens when they're in this tetrad form. They do what's called crossing over. So make sure you have that bolded, underlined, starred under prophase one. That's a huge thing that happens here that doesn't happen anywhere else. Crossing over takes place during prophase one. And then just like in prophase of mitosis, the spindle fibers are forming, the nucleus is breaking down, down, uh, but the big thing is going to be that the homologous chromosomes pair up and then they cross over. So let's talk about what this means. Make sure you include this in your notes. If you don't have room under prophase 1, write it down at the bottom. So crossing over produces an exchange of genetic information. This is why you do not look exactly like your siblings. So during crossing over, you have a segment of a chromosome that is exchanged between the pair of homologous chromosomes. Um, so you can see here, pretend, you know, this is... Um, one homologous chromosome, this is another homologous chromosome, they sort of hold hands. And then when crossing over it takes place, you can see there's a little slice of pink that's now on the blue, and there's a little slice of blue that's now on the pink. That is crossing over. Okay, it's almost like you taking off your hat and putting it onto the hat of your best friend and them taking off their hat and putting it onto your head. The rest of you stays the same. You're just exchanging one little piece of information, that hat. That's exactly what happens in crossing over. This is a huge important process that happens in prophase one because this creates genetic differences. Okay, so in metaphase one, meta means middle, so they're still lining up in the middle, but the difference is that they're lining up in pairs in metaphase one. Homologous chromosomes are lining up in pairs in metaphase one. So still the spindle fibers are attaching to the middle, the centromere, they're pushing them to the middle of the cell, but they're still in that tetrad form. They've just crossed over, so they're still holding hands, so they are lined up in homologous pairs, underlined pairs, because that's key here. So when they're being pulled apart in anaphase 1, they are the homologous chromosomes that are separating towards the end of the cell here, towards the poles of the cell. So in anaphase 1, I always think they look like little pupils, sort of being dragged to the opposite poles of the cell. Like imagine these as arms and imagine these as legs. Okay, so in anaphase 1, we have entire chromosomes that are being pulled to the pole. That's different in anaphase 2, so make sure you, you draw that picture really well. 
And then in telophase 2, it's just sort of like in telophase of mitosis. The chromosomes are uncoiling, the nuclei are reforming, the cell is beginning to divide, the spindle fibers are breaking down. This is not any different than what's happening in um, telophase of mitosis. Okay, so following meiosis 1, we've gone through one nucleic division. So far, we have two daughter cells, and at this point, the cells are haploid. Okay, they're not completely done yet, but they are haploid at this point because the homologous chromosomes have been separated. So after meiosis 1, sometimes cells go through a cytokinesis after my meiosis 1, sometimes they don't. It really just depends on the type of cell. But either way, whether or not they have cytokinesis, they're going to go into meiosis 2. So same order, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So in prophase 2, we have the chromosomes condensing again, the chromosomes forming, the nucleus breaking down, the spindles fibers forming, really the same thing that sort of happens in uh, prophase of mitosis. The only difference is that now we're, we're doing this in two cells instead of one. So that's prophase two. Okay, then comes metaphase two. Now remember, in metaphase one, we had the chromosomes lined up along the middle in pairs. That was a key component of metaphase one. In metaphase two, those haploid chromosomes are lining up along the middle of the cell, and they're lining up single file, just like they did in metaphase of mitosis. The difference here is in metaphase two of meiosis, we're dealing with two cells. So they are lined up single file, one after the other. So that in anaphase 2, there are now chromatids being pulled apart, very much like they were in anaphase of mitosis. So the chromatids are now being pulled to the opposite poles of the cell. You know, the spindle fibers are shortening, pulling them in towards the centrioles. Um, and very similar to what happens in anaphase of mitosis, again, the difference is that we're, this is happening in two cells now instead of one. And then finally, we have telophase 2, where the chromosomes have reached the poles, the nucleus is reforming, um, the chromosomes are uncondensing, you know, they're uncoiling back into chromatin, until finally you have cytokinesis, which is the cutting of the cytoplasm, which results in four haploid daughter cells, each with that n number of chromosomes. So in, in humans, each one of these cells would have 23 chromosomes. Okay, so make sure you go back and pause on any of those uh, pictures, any of the, the slides to get that information because it is very important that you have both the pictures and what is happening in each stage. I do real quickly want to point out that there's a difference in, in meiosis in males and meiosis in females. Following meiosis in males, it produces, that original parent cell produces four sperm cells. For some reason, and we're not entirely sure why, in meiosis in females, all like a lot of the cytoplasm and organelles get sort of pushed into one cell, um, and that will be what matures into an actual egg cell. So technically, you produce four daughter cells, but only one will mature into an egg cell. This is part of why you know males produce so many more sperm uh, than females produce eggs, and also males produce sperm throughout their entire lives, and we know that females are sort of born with the number of eggs. Um, that that we have and we're left with that for the rest of our lives okay so real quick let's summarize the importance of meiosis meiosis produces gametes meiosis produces sex cells these are four haploid daughter cells that are not identical which results in genetic variation so why in the world is genetic variation so important? How does that happen? Depending on how the chromosomes line up at the equator, four gametes with four different combinations of chromosomes can result. This is why, girls, you and your sisters don't look exactly alike. Boys, this is why you and your brothers don't look exactly alike. So this is a result of two things, crossing over and how the... Uh, chromosomes line up along the middle of the cell during metaphase. Both of those things result in genetic variation. So you should know this by now, but in asexual reproduction, you have one parent producing offspring that are genetically identical. In sexual reproduction, you have two parents that are producing genetic variation. And genetic variation is a good thing. I mean, both have benefits, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. But in humans, we definitely want sexual reproduction. This is why we look different from one another. This is why we're all different. 
Okay, um, you do have a bonus opportunity. So bring in a mitosis or meiosis related joke for extra credit on your homework check. And then please make sure you fill in the Venn diagram comparing and contrasting mitosis and meiosis. We'll go over that in class, but try to write at least a couple of things in each section. I think you can do it on your own.